Well, I hate to say it, but I don't like this vice. Over the time that I own this shaper now, I don't think I uploaded a single video where it doesn't push the job out of the vice jaws, at least on one occasion. The amount of force that you can exert to clamp your workpiece down is rather reduced with this type of vise because of its design. Where a usual vise has a fixed and a movable jaw, this one has two movables. That means the total distance traveled for, say, a turn of the crank is doubled and therefore the clamping force is divided in half. Having two movable jaws is advantageous when, say, you have keyways to slot on round shafts of different diameters and you don't want to set up the middle of the workpiece each time. Because this thing is just going to move an equal amount on both sides, that means you can chuck different diameters without losing your center coordinate. However, if you want to clamp down on any old stalk, and just hog the hell out of it, then this is not the perfect type of vise you want to look for. So I have two options here really. Number one would be to buy a new vise, and number two would be to adapt this vise to make it the fixed jaw type. And that's what we're going to do. Since the base plate is made for this table specifically, with the key slot distances, and the little stones in the middle to keep it aligned, I think we can't find a better fitting vise for this machine than this here. The general plan here is to fix this jaw down right at the end of travel and to have this jaw solely moving along the length of the bed here. In order to make that possible, we'll have to machine a new lead screw and that's going to have a left hand thread all along here and of course it's going to end before it engages into this thing over here. So here is the spindle and the new one we're going to make as a plan. You can see this is the left handed portion here and the right handed portion here. This one is going to be left hand thread all the way and it's of course going to be a little bit shorter so that it doesn't collide or interfere with the fixed jaw on the other side. This thread here you'd assume would be some standard acme trapezoidal kind of deal. And so I ground myself a threading tool which is going to fit in here and replicate that profile. And yeah, the rest is just machining a small recess and then a square onto the end. Okay, given that this is the very first cutting thread cutting tool I've ever ground, um, it's not perfect. There is a small error on the left side of the tool, but that's okay. It's so minor, I don't think it's going to matter. We're making a thread for a vice here after all. Hello, fellas. This is Charlie Spivak. Here's a new ballad for your v -disc. Irene Day sings, Suddenly it's spring from the picture Lady in the Dark. We hope you enjoy listening.
So here's the new spindle. It fits excellent. Well, it has a little bit of end play, but then so does this thing. And again, this is a vise, so you're going to experience chips getting caught on here. And you don't want these to mar your beautiful fit. So it's advisable to have a little bit of play in your vice spindles. I'll admit I made this thing twice because I didn't have the pitch right. It wasn't 5 TPI but it was metric 5 mm pitch. And it is almost right because 1 inch is 25.4 millimeters and 25.4 divided by 5 is almost 5 but not quite. So it looked right with the thread gauge and it looked right on the first couple of turns but over the length of the thing of course the error adds up and then it's going to go in like 3 turns and then it's going to jam. So I had to make this again but I'm glad I had to because I learned so many things about thread cutting on a profile like this. For example, instead of doing it all with the profile tool in one go, I pre-roughed this with a straight parting blade, which was thinner than the finished profile, and then I did the finish turning with the profile tool, so that I wouldn't get any chip welding, I wouldn't get a finish as rough. And with this one, I'm actually really, really happy. The only thing that's left now is putting the square onto the end and to drill the counter pin hole to accept the locking pin for the collar. With the gib clamped onto the jaw and it being able to move, the play to the bed is less than five hundredths of a millimeter. So I think if we machine this jaw here to be able to clamp down on here solidly, then we're permanently modifying this thing and it's never going to be able to be a loose jaw. If anyone wanted to convert this thing back to a self-centering vise, wouldn't really be possible without you know, considerable amount of effort. So instead of machining this thing, I think it would be a great idea to just take the gib and put some of this thin sheet stock in between, say 500, one tenth of a millimeter, whatever, and that's going to make it clamp just nicely. And in order to make absolutely sure that this thing will never move backwards on me, I'm going to drill two holes horizontally through the jaws into the bed and then fit two pins into here, which should take up any forces coming in the axial direction.
Well, as far as I'm concerned, this thing is done. I now have the pins in here, the jaw is nice and fixed, and of course, the jaw is moving nicely along here. And just like before, you can clamp parts in here nicely. Now, does it work better than before? I can't tell yet. I currently do not have the material to try and do some heavy cutting. Um, so we'll have to wait until that project comes around. But what I can tell you is that when you really pull on this, then you can give it quite a bit more of, let's say, preload than I had with the other one. With the other one, as soon as you hit the workpiece, it was basically a dead stop and the crank wouldn't go any further. But now I'm against the work and I can give it about, say, an eighth of a turn or so, you know, to load it up. So I'm hoping that's going to be the measure of success and um, this vice is now going to be clamping stuff securely and I don't have to buy myself another vice which usually has less travel. This one has quite a lot of travel and the jaws are also mostly more narrow than this if I don't want to completely blow my budget. So yeah, here's hoping this was a successful fix or overhaul or tune or whatever you want to call it and that's it from my side thank you very much for watching and bye bye